Hi, my name is Canal Aurora, and my immigrant jam is crushed chips and salsa. Ah! Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at Immigrant Jam headquarters, live from New York City, the best podcast in the entire world. Obviously, I'm your host, Lucy Pohl. Thank you for joining us today here on this podcast. Um, welcome back if you've listened to an episode before, and welcome if you're new, you've made the best decision of your life. Yes, that's right. Uh, we are here in the studio with a very, very very special guest, one of the funniest people of all time, one of the funniest men to ever have walked the <laughs> lands. He has an album out, okay? It's called? Draw Four. Draw Four. He has a podcast out. It's called? City of Rats. And he is the one, the only, Mr. Kunal Aurora. This is a... I want to hate, but this is a beautiful intro. And your voice control is stellar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand why people will put money in your pocket for it. Put money in my throat <laughs> for it. <laughs> the, I, <laughs> don't do that. No, don't, I did it. I, I already know. did it. It's already done. We already yeah. did that. And also, yeah. um, hello, Mark, uh, a.k.a. Jiggy Jagarjian, also in the house. Um <clears throat> Producer extraordinaire, obviously. Um, Kunal, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> you know when people do that? I know. And then you keep going back and yes, forth? Yes, because nobody wants to answer that question because it shouldn't be answered. Really? No. See, that's a very American thing. It, what? To not answer Only how are you? Only in America is that a thing that you ask how are you and you don't want the answer. Yeah, because everyone's mentally ill. <laughs> That's why everyone's suffering horribly. You want that? You want a real answer? Yeah, people are losing it. You think that's <clears throat> a specifically American thing that yes. everybody's mentally ill? I mean, not a lot. A, an overwhelming majority. You think more people are mentally ill here than in other places? I love that we're yelling. Yeah. We both grew up in New York, and yes. this is what happens. Yeah, because when two it's, New Yorkers talk to each it's, other. Yes, I do. I do believe you have a combination of the lack of uh, health care, and this is, I hate to start it off this way, and then you also have the uh, exorbitant amount of push it deep within your body mm. and never talk about it, mm. and then you take those two things together, whether that be through our government or through religion and, and people's upbringing, and you've got this. Here's Johnny! Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's what you have. A man <laughs> axe chopping his way into a door ready to kill a family. Yes. <laughs> Specifically his own. Yeah. 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 The most American thing ever. Exactly. You think people are less mentally ill in India, um, where your parents are from? You know, that almost feels like a jab. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know it's not. Why? I know it's not. I, know. I said it like in a pointed yeah, way. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It sounded pointed. And yeah. um, is mental illness bad there? I'm sure. But uh, the India I came, my parents came from doesn't exist anymore. Oh. It stopped existing decades ago. Meaning? My parents came from 1975 India. Right? Or like the 70s. Okay. India. That doesn't... India moved forward without them. India moved like a couple of inches to the left? No, no, not politically. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the country. The con oh, like it shifted? Yeah. Funny. Yeah, um, so it's like, yeah, but it's like not that. It's mm. like they shifted, like time progressed in India. Right. And my parents are stuck in this case as to who they are <gasps> forever, Okay. essentially. Because the India that they go back to doesn't exist anymore. That's so interesting because my grandma had that. My grandma was Romanian. Right. And um, they moved to Germany when she was 40. So she was, you know, a grown-ass woman. And then she didn't go back to Romania for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then when she went back, it was like, she, it was unrecognizable. But right. she was never German, yes, obviously. She of course. always was Romanian. Yes. But, the, but her or home... Or as I like to call them, parking lot Europeans. What? <laughs> Get out of yeah. this it's, studio. They're, they're part of the Europe, but they're in the parking lot. They're the Puerto Ricans of Europe. I wouldn't go that far, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the New York and you coming out, <laughs> right? Um, but it, but that's a crazy thing because you have this like longing for your home, but that right. home doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't. My home doesn't exist now. Your home doesn't exist now? No. What do you mean? Like New York is not your home? It is, but the home that I grew up Wait, are you homeless? Yeah, I mean, it's First homeless guest on the podcast. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, but I think that I if I ended up homeless, 
let's just explore that for a second. I would feel like not just a failure. I'd be a. I'd feel like a failure of the city got the best of me. Oh wow! And that's not how you're raised in New York City. Mm. You have to constantly get the best of the city. True. true and if true. you're not, you're being hustled. True. And in some regards, I'm still being hustled. Of right? course, yeah. So, you know, because I'm not in a penthouse, but I'm certainly not homeless, right? right. But I'm doing the best I can for now. But the, uh, where was I going about this? You Is, said that my home doesn't exist. Exactly. Thank you. And so Flushing, Queens, where I grew up. Yeah. I can't, that doesn't exist anymore. Because the way it's that, been gentrified? Not mean? just, because it's changed. And like, it used to be like the racial breakdown of Flushing, Queens was what America will look like in 50 years mm. but it doesn't it hasn't existed like that in 40. Whole, hardly any white people is what you mean well it's i mean and it was rarely white people yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah yeah so it was like a mix of different races but racism wasn't a thing right there was no such thing as a minority mm -hmm. in flushing queens like any my uh, one of my best friends growing up was half black half brazilian right right I think no quarter black quarter uh, native american half brazilian and he was like wait what's the other half <laughs> and he Sorry. some of them I'm just going to steamroll over yeah, with yeah, yeah you no, know what I mean the best thing yeah do. I know yeah. but then it's just like but then I never there was no like pressure there was no like minority majority feeling yeah so any racist bullshit we would like say to each other there was never that overwhelming feeling of being felt like what a minority is mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when I'm in Amer when I'm in New York City now the one that I know of it now I live in the New York City that friends is mm -hmm. Like the show, right? That's the New York City I live in now, and that's not what I grew up in. But that, in that sense, everybody would have that experience because everything has changed from twenty years ago. Like, right? Right. Or, or most places, I guess that's not really not true. New York, right? New York in particular. Sure, yeah. sure. But like, I guess like the suburbs don't really change. Well, yeah, the suburbs don't change. Right. But like, think about like Williamsburg, mm. thirty some years ago. Yeah, why? You wouldn't go in there. No. People would like, I remember my cousin dated an artist in Williamsburg and she was terrified to take the L train. Yes, yes. I remember the first time I went to Williamsburg, I was 17 and it was like, whoa, mm. going to Williamsburg. Right, right. You know, like, and like, we didn't even, I didn't even know most of the like neighborhood names anyway until, mm. you know, re I'm still like, sometimes I'm like, what is this? I've never heard of this. Because you when know? you're a Manhattanite. Yeah. And you don't venture into Brooklyn. Right. You don't you generally stay on your side of the of the of the yard. Absolutely. Same thing with Queens. Totally. Like we never went to Brooklyn. The first time I went to Brooklyn, unless I'm driving through it to the city, yep. it's you generally skip it. Yep. And yep. then when I would go to Brooklyn growing up, it's just like uh, like, you know, when I was in my 20s, I'd go to Brooklyn and we'd go to Williamsburg. We'd be in a warehouse party. Yeah. And like, this is crazy. Right. <laughs> yes. I can't believe this is like, what is this? Yeah, I'm watching yeah, yeah. like women painted in white on a swing. <laughs> it's like weird house music is happening. And I go, I'm in on this. I'm yeah. all in on this. Yeah. But it was just so strange for Queens cats to venture into Brooklyn. Totally. Because it was like so out the box for us. Yeah, of course. And same with, you know, uh, people from Manhattan going to Queens. And people, I remember like people from Queens or the Bronx being in downtown Manhattan and being lost, you know, yeah, and like, being like I don't know where anything is, right, where right. am I right now? And mm. like, uh, yeah, you would never venture. Out. And even within Manhattan, like I grew up in Soho, but you wouldn't go east of Bowery, for example, never right. go to Alphabet City, Absolutely, you not. know, like Tompkins Square. I remember my sister went to Tompkins Square Park once and hung out there. My parents yelled at her for like an hour. Yeah, of course. They were like, what the fuck were you thinking? I Are you lived insane? on CN 9th, but this was probably 2000 and like 14, 15. Mm. And at that point, it was so much safer yeah. than what people talked about Alphabet City. Yeah. Alphabet City, it's almost like you would never go to A. Right. Now people are like, D can be a little sketchy. Yeah. But they've watched it further, you know what I mean? Yeah, and once yeah. they, basically, essentially, once they get rid of their government housing, then it'll it's be. It's all over. Then it's all over. Yeah. Which they will. But so, do you think, because in that sense, you're, you're when you talked about your parents or your mom that like, you know, doesn't really have a home anymore because the home that she left is not the way that it is anymore. And so she's obviously an immigrant here. Yeah. And then she's not really at home there anymore. Do you think like that sense of not belonging gets passed down too? Huh. Like, is that like, like um in your DNA now? Do you know what I'm saying? 
I think about that a lot. I'm going to be honest. I did not think about that at all. Mm. That's really, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, yeah. You want to take a minute to mug at the camera? This is the time me to do it. Lucy Ammonpole. Uh, okay. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Christian Ammonpole. Is, is that, what is that? Christian Ammonpole. She's like this like badass journalist. Oh, the only journalist I think about is Daniel right? Pearl. <laughs> he looks so yeah. confused. Yeah, we're all confused. Christian Amanpour. You're saying this like this is a, like this yeah, is a person I should know. Don't you watch the news ever? Do you know who Daniel Pearl is? No. He's Who's the guy that? who got his head chopped off. <laughs> Remember, him? Remember him? Nobody. I don't. Br I bring him up. Nobody knows him. He's got his head chopped off. Yeah, what he can like he contribute? The, he was the first journalist to do it. Yeah, but you can't watch him do interviews anymore You're, if he I doesn't mean, have a you head. You can't. <laughs> you cannot. But the He's point a, that um, the best headless interviewer out there. <laughs> you yes, it's a great. I never thought about that kind of feeling uh, about like maybe that was passed down. Yeah. I look at it like what my experiences are and what my my mother's experiences are or my dad's experiences, and they're vastly they are the same, but at the same time they are different. Mm. You know, I never really thought about. It. That's a great question. Maybe maybe she did pass that down. You know? I've been, I I think about that because, you know, on my mom's side, they're Jewish. And so, like, that obviously is a people that's been, like, persecuted and had to, like, pack up and leave. This that, again? What are you smiling <laughs> about, you fuck? This again? <laughs> no, Here but I'm saying that's why I think about it if yeah. that, that stuff is passed down. <laughs> <laughs> what, the if feeling of fast, victimization? That's... <laughs> wow okay a rare jaw drop moment for me in my life the feeling of victimization wow i mean we can get into that if okay you want to. do you yeah. want to get into no that? i don't but i'm just why are you saying why are you saying victimization i don't know if, uh, if you think being persecuted for thousands of years is victimization no i don't think it's i think it is and it isn't Mm -hmm. Right? It's not like I'm not going to adopt a. Now we know why you never went to Williamsburg in the oh, 90s. Oh, shit. Now it. we know. Uh, yeah, that's. I didn't even know Jewish people <laughs> lived there. The Jews hates them. My girlfriend's Jewish. Exactly. Yeah. What, you think I can what, keep, my, keep my enemy close? <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know. I think that that kind of stuff can be passed down. I think it is. And subconsciously, it all is. Yeah. I was just talking about that with a friend of mine where all the things that our parents, we always think about the things that they do on a surface level that we don't want to do ourselves. Mm. But we never think about a subconscious level of the things that they're doing and how we also do them. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that. Like, like what? Um, I don't want to be in my head. Mm. I don't want to. I can live there relatively well. That's the penthouse, baby. <laughs> my head is a phenomenal jail. Uh -huh. I've cultivated a fantastic place to escape. So, And you think that's something that your parents did? Was, my dad do? did it a lot. And I was like, I don't want. Meaning not expressing his emotions. Lack his of expressing his emotions. Lack of uh, being in the moment. Mm -hmm. Lack of just kind of being here. Mm. Because here was so upsetting that it makes it hard to exist there. And it was upsetting because of the struggles of being an immigrant and making it, making money. I mean, and, there's, or... yeah, there's that. The money aspect. The fact that you come to a country in which you don't know the language in which now you ever let's say um i was talking to like my buddy akash singh right comic mm -hmm. we both know him and funny guy and Name he was drop. he was he was saying <laughs> i don't want to not say who is who he no, is no, right i know you. i know but like i just like he said that he talked about one time that he um like he you know he talked about like think about his parents like his dad was so well versed mm -hmm. in in the language he spoke mm -hmm. that imagine coming mm -hmm. here yeah. that you lose a lot of oh, that oh yeah so if you're like a social cat yeah. let's say if you're like a real like you're a charismatic motherfucker and then you come here and now you can't even express that mm -hmm. you're trapped I think that's why my dad never really learned English. My dad's a writer and he's mm. like the way he talks, the way he writes, like yeah. he's so eloquent and so charming and like, you know, such a like, like words are his thing. Yeah. And I think that's partially why he just kind of like never learned English because he knew he could never get there anyway. So now he talks like this and he's super yeah. like his accent <laughs> is so funny and he yeah. just says shit like if he doesn't know a word, then he says the Tischdecke in German and people uh, just understand it or not. And, right. and he's still a character because of yeah, that. Of course. But like he turned that into a thing instead of actually learning the because language. Because it's more right. comfortable. Right. 
right. It's yeah. easier and to do that. And my grandma too. My grandma too. Um, I was always told she was super witty and funny in Romanian. She was in German too, but I could tell that there was right. something You know what I'm lost. saying? That's what gets, that's what happens when a lot of these immigrants come to this country. They lose that. Did you, but you guys spoke English at home growing um, up? Yeah, but it was like broken. You know, it's like half English, half Hindi. So you you speak Hindi? Yeah, I mean, poorly. Mm. I, when people ask, I generally say no. Because that's another thing that I find so interesting when the kids of immigrants don't learn their parents' language. And then exactly what you're saying, don't actually ever really get to know them. Yeah, of right? course not. No, I don't yeah. think I've, I've only started to learn who my mom is as a person now. Mm. And it's like, I think growing up in a hostile environment, you're really just trying to survive. And I think that once you start to get to, once your things are in a peaceful place, you start to look around you and start to sort of understand what's happening. So. Meaning you feel you grew up in a hostile environment. Yeah, I mean, no, it's like my my dad had uh, drinking issues mm. and, you know, uh, it was just a tough, uh, it was a tough upbringing. Yeah. So I just think that that kind of stuff, you don't have time to sit around and get to know each other. No, of course. Yeah, you're a little more like, <laughs> all right, let's, let's avoid what's happening here. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Let's try to keep the peace yeah. and not ask too many questions. Right. So that's what I think is more important. But as I've gotten older and, you know, I've spoken to my mom more and I'm like, I try to understand who she is as a human being. You know, and like that to me, I want to, I value that. I want to learn more of that. I want to learn more of the culture. I want to, I started learning how to cook from my mom mm. and it's like such a fantastic feeling to just be able to replicate her dishes. So you feel like you're embracing that your like Indianness more now um, than when you were yeah, younger? Yeah, absolutely. Basically? No, because there was nothing to, my parents were working, they had a grocery store, then they were running that In too. In Flushing? In Flushing, yeah. It was a, and so they were gone and I was kind of left to raise myself in a, in a, in a, in a, a huge amount, mm -hmm. right? So then I think that now that I have time to like reflect and I've got more space to do the things that I want to do. I start to do that. I go, let me learn these things, these skill sets. Like I like all of these things. I think that they're important, you know? Yeah. It's so, it's so fascinating to me because when you grow up, um, in this like cross-cultural way, right. And mm. then you're also trying to fit in or, or, you know, become this person that works in whatever system you're living in, which right. is New York or America or whatever. And then later in life, you're like, hold on a second. What is this other part of me? And right. what does this mean? And how yeah. do I connect to it? When I was 18, I was like, I'm going to move to Germany because am I really like German? I'm going to yeah. see how it is here. Right. Um, and, and I, you did, I did. Yeah. And how long did you live there? I lived there for like four or five years almost. Oh, that's great. I hated it. I mean, I, I hated it. I could, if anyone told me I had to move to India for four or five years, <laughs> or like the other option is forget everyone I've ever met and loved and start an entirely different life in witness protection. <laughs> Peace out. I'm not doing it. I am not well, going to live gonna in India. I was going to ask you about this because yeah. um, and you have you know, some jokes about how you go to India and it, it sucks. No. Or like it's dirty and no, you don't no, like no, no, it. No, 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 yes. no, no, well, no. I've never, I, I don't have like. I saw you do a set about well, not glorifying right. India. I don't have well-formed bits about like chunks about India being like a dirty place. I've got thoughts. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah. I've heard you say that sure, on stage, sure, sure, sure. and yeah. I thought it was brave. I'm getting defensive. <laughs> no, but I thought it was brave. I haven't said anything about India. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought it was brave because I also saw you do that on a show with, like, a majority Indian audience or South Asian audience. I think audience. I know what show you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And I thought it was brave because, yeah. you know, usually you see especially immigrant kids that were born in the US, there's like this like glorification yes. of the country that their parents are from. Right. You know, right. even though it's right. not that simple. It's never that simple. That's very you know? true. I think a lot of people adopt the it's almost like we eat, pray, love our way into right. this our parents' country. Yes. And then we just go, I'm gonna but I mean, it's like when I go to India, I don't feel Indian. Right. I feel more American there. I totally understand that. You know, that. You know oh, like yeah. you, when you were in Germany, I'd imagine totally. you felt the same way. 100%. Because they, they look at the way you speak German and they're like, what is this mangling of the language? Well, no, I speak perfect German. Okay, well. So, sorry, everything <laughs> I do is perfect. Jesus no, I don't have, no, take this Mexican, I don't have an accent, yeah. which makes it worse. Right, right, because right. Because I can't be like, I'm not one of you people. Right. Like, they think I'm one of them, right. but I'm just weird. Right. And then when they find out, they're like, we oh, We think you're yeah. weird here, too. 
too, by the way. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Good. But yeah. Um, um, I don't. I don't think that. Yeah. I think when I was on stage, I remember that show. Yeah. And I said that, and it was just like, yeah, man, I don't care. I'm like, I'm not gonna sit here and glorify my parents. Like, oh, as some sort of, I don't have to respect anything. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of being American. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah that's what it means to be american I think it not is. respecting shit i think yeah i think when you sit on this this place <laughs> uh -huh. you get to be as ignorant as you want to be <laughs> somebody said that's to me the, so funny then that because you can always just say well i'm american yeah yeah man i i remember when i, I did a semester abroad in australia mm. And people thought I was Canadian because I was nice. Ah. I was like a nice guy. You were nice? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, now what? we know how you feel. All right, but, <laughs> at this, but then I was just like, once people were like, oh, you're American? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, and, you know, they'd uh, ask. I'd, <laughs> I love that you said it in the most New York way possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you didn't know I was American? What the hell? I'm wearing a New York hat. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm eating a slice of pizza. <laughs> Where, where'd you get that from? You know? like a hot dog it, necklace. Right. <laughs> just a necklace of a hot dog. Uh, a ballpark on a chain. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't, just the most New York shit possible. Yeah. I've got rings, but they're small bagels. <laughs> so uh, it's like, yeah, it's like, the that's the beauty of being a New Yorker and being an American is mm. that I get to bask in my ignorance. I was on stage the other day and somebody was like, I'm from Bosnia. And I go, is that next to the Ukraine? He goes, no. Uh <laughs> He's like, not even, cl it's like on the other side. And I go, on the other side of what? He goes, Europe. And I go, it's all the same, dude. <laughs> It's all the same. You're all parking lot Europeans to me. What? That's yeah. fucked up. But yet, you are not ignorant. What do you mean? You're not ignorant. You know shit. I guess. I you don't know even, stuff. I mean, I know some stuff. You know the guy who got his head chopped off? That's because I wanted to be a journalist. <laughs> ah! Yeah. And you don't know Christian Amanpour? I was wanted. Fuck? Wanted. You wanted to be a journalist. And then I stopped. And then I was like, what, oh. what stopped me? Yeah. Watching that man get his head <laughs> cut. I go, not for me. I go, I like pissing people off. I didn't know they could come back and chop a dude's head off. That's what happened. That's I said, so I would love funny. to irritate people on the world stage. So ISIS crushed your dreams. I mean, in a lot of ways, we all lost. Or ISIS made you a comedian. Yeah, uh, I think so. You became a comedian because of ISIS. Thank you. Thanks, ISIS. Thank you, terrorists. Thanks a lot, ISIS. Thank you. <laughs> this comedy is sponsored by Hezbollah. <laughs> In your in your acceptance speech when you win a Mark Twain prize, yes, yeah. you'll thank yeah, I the thank, Taliban. <laughs> yes, I want to thank the <laughs> Taliban. Yeah, I want to thank all the other Shiites and all the other, <laughs> all the other militant uh, groups out there. So you're American. Yeah, I mean, yeah. For so better, when you go to India, you feel American. Absolutely. But in America, do you feel Indian? No, I don't feel. What do you Indian. feel here? I feel horny all the time. <laughs> this would have been a great time for a blue shoe ad if that's how you were going to lead into it. Um, I don't know. I feel kind of, uh, I feel lost. Oh. I feel kind of, you know. Really? Yeah. Like uh, identity culturally? Right. Yeah. I just feel like I'm this thing that I have to sort of forge my own path in mm -hmm. a way where other kids that were raised here from immigrant parents have to kind of like, I'm, that's what's going to happen. I don't have a choice in the matter. I have to sort of lead my own path. There's no real path I feel like I can follow. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, um, that's really. I should have saved that for the end, right? No, that's really interesting. <laughs> but do you think that all immigrant kids have that experience or you in particular have that experience? I think that when you're raised in New York City, it kind of like there's, when you're raised in parts outside, there's like a culture that you kind of um, can attach yourself to, like more, more white, more black. But when you're raised in New York City, you have to kind of find who you are. And it's sort of like more, I guess it's kind of like punk rock mm -hmm. in its own way. You know, it's its own thing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, I don't really associate like being white or being black mm. and that's like a thing that i was raised seeing mm. and like you see that with a lot of immigrants now right of that are of color really and then i go i don't want that to be what i am i want to be something different mm. something where i'm more me 
and I'm not going to be, and that in its own thing will be, it's a, will be a box unto itself. Being a New Yorker is like its own thing, like its own cultural identity. It is, but the problem is it gets muddled. It does. It gets Too muddled. Many people from Ohio. Well, no. No, no, it gets muddled. It's true. It gets muddled because like the stereotype of what a New Yorker is. Italian American. Italian American, or it's either this, I'm from, I'm walking over here. Yeah, let me or, get a cannoli. Yeah. Or Nobody. It's, yeah, it's like cannolis are gross. Yes, they're so disgusting. I agree. Once yeah. For once we agree on something. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's they're, amazing. They are like, yeah. oh, gross. gross. Anyway, yeah. but the, and then the other aspect is like this, um, you know, New York City all day, son, like mm -hmm. this very like yeah. hood mentality. Right. And I think that there's, there's this other <laughs> box entirely where the rest of us are in mm -hmm. and this includes you thank you you're welcome and all the rats and yes all the <laughs> rats do yes the rats are there but they're well, it's the funny because when i left new york when i was 18 or 19 i i was like oh i, I grew up in new york i can live anywhere no and then i found no. out oh shit i grew up in new york i can't live anywhere right because no, no, no. of that you yeah. know and i think like this mentality also uh, um i went to an international i didn't grow up in flushing but i went mm. to an international school like you know nobody was just from one place like mm -hmm. you were saying your friend growing up you know part brazilian part native this that um nobody was just one thing and then i remember it was such a culture shock for me going to germany and being like where are you from and people were like I'm German. Like yeah. I'm just German. I'm just here. Just German. Yeah. Everybody in my family is German. And there's I'm like, no, what the fuck? There's, it's such a bug out to be in a place where everybody is from the same place. Yes. It's like, I never, did you take road trips as a kid? Like, no. did your family go on vacations? They all, always to the same place. Where was the same place? Um, When we lived here, well, once we moved here, they went to like, uh, where do we go on vacation? Oh my God. I guess Italy sometimes and okay. then Long Island. Okay. And then I would go to Germany by myself. You, it's like you're getting two Italian experiences. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we, we're going to get what real Italians are and then we're going to get what America thinks Italians are. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Before we moved here, we went to Italy every year. And then when we moved here, then I feel like we didn't go on that many vacations anymore. And then I went by myself a lot. Like mm. I would go visit my sister because she was older, like in right. Spain and stuff. I go to Germany. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that you get to like, Doing comedy has brought me to different places. Like I never, our family, we didn't take vacations. Right. Point blank. Yeah. Just none. Like you just be here all summer. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I think the one time I went away for like the summer was, uh, I went to a camp, a sleepaway camp mm. for like a week, but it was like, um, when I got there, I found out it was one, um, a fat camp. And then also, I'm not laughing. it's fine. And it was <laughs> also, fat? I was like, sh not. It didn't warrant it. Did your parents know it was a fan camp, or it was just no? Like it was it was marketed as an as a f exercise and fitness camp. Oh wow! So to them, it's like, oh cool, he'll de he'll be exercising. <laughs> but it was like political correctness way ahead of its time. And it's like, no, you're sending, I got sent to a fat camp Wow. and I get there and it was like also a religious fat camp. What? Yeah. It was like a Muslim fat camp. A Muslim fat camp? Yeah. That sounds like a setup. I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I got into a van and there was no windows and I go, this is already bad. And we get there and I, I'm like, we're driving in the middle of the woods to Pennsylvania. I don't know where I am. And we get out of the van and we're ushered into like a, a, a church hall and it's a camp that we just, we wake up, they wake us up at 5 a.m. and we'd have to exercise. What? And then get lectured in a language I didn't even understand. What do you mean? What language was it? I, Arabic. I don't even know. It was Arabic? I, whatever they, I don't know what they speak. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting lectured and then it was just like, I go, yo, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> How I, old were you? I was like 12. Wow. I'm like, this is this does not constitute fat camp. <laughs> like, I'm looking at myself and I'm going, this is not necessary. Was everybody else fat? They, uh, Yes. <gasps> Fatter. <laughs> Fatter than me. And it's like, you want to know what you don't want to be? The least fat kid at fat camp. Were you Muslim? No. 
I was raised under Hinduism. The first thing I did is I call my mom. I get her on the phone. I'm like, they were like, you, you're allowed a phone call. I go, yeah, I better be. You're, they said you're allowed a yeah, phone like call? Yeah, like we don't want you calling your family all the time. And I go, sure. And I get on, I'm going to use this as a phone. I get on the phone. Yes, and I finally. Go, yeah, and I go, you sent me to a Muslim fat camp. <laughs> and my mom goes, well, I don't, well, what do you want me to do about that now? And I go, well, I don't know. She's like, well, you can't come home. So I just stay there. You couldn't come home? No. I mean, I just didn't, I, you know, I was not accepting. I always accepted what it was. I never, like, questioned or pushed back because it was like, you know, why should you or whatever. So I just was there. Did you get skinny? No. Did you Did you worship what, did, no, uh -huh. I didn't come back skinny or Muslim, <laughs> which really is a testament to how bad the camp was. Because one would think I'd at least come back with abs or a belief in Allah. I came back with neither. In fact, I was running ops at night buying soda from the from the vending machine what? and doling them out to the kids because I didn't mind the dark as much, you know? So I'd run from like where we were in bunk beds. So all the other fat Muslim kids were scared of the dark and yeah. the skinny Hindu kid from New York. Skinny fat, but yeah. <laughs> skinny skinny fat. fat Hindu kid from New York yes. was like, I got this. Yeah, and I'd be taking their money and buying sodas and giving it to the kids. You're not writing a movie about this? This I mean, is the funniest thing I've ever heard. I just, I, I don't, I think about it and it almost sounds unreal. No, this is like a new Stand By Me. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember the movie, but yeah, it's like, I know, I know, but it's, that's what it was. We were, and they, you know, they knew that I wasn't, I, I wasn't Muslim. They knew, they looked at me like, he's not even all that fat. <laughs> the real cruelty. They thought you were a narc. Yeah. They thought I was like, an, I was already, <laughs> yeah. I was from the FBI. Yeah. I'm a 12 year old from the FBI. <laughs> I'm smoking cigarettes in the woods. Exactly. They're up to something. <laughs> we're playing flight simulator out here. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, I'm just assuming all sorts of horrible things. But it's like the, the real <laughs> tragedy about all this the real thing that irked me the most uh -huh. is that my brother was actually fat <gasps> and that's the part that really and upset he didn't me get sent. Uh, that's the problem what did he get to do in that week nothing he got get he, fatter no he, he <laughs> got sent he, to like like um uh a uh, swimsuit model yeah, massage yeah, yeah. A plus size camp. model camp <laughs> Where he's told to accept. Boiling down models. Yeah, he's, he's accepting who his body is. It's beautiful. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm being shamed. Like I'm being woken at 5 a.m. I'm being told like. they a, sent the wrong brother by accident? No, 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 no. My mom, the thing is my best friend went with me. Uh, and he was Muslim. And he was fat. And Muslim. And fat. Yes. Uh, well, I, I didn't think he was fat. <laughs> like I'm 12. You don't, you don't see weight? I mean, I do now. <laughs> you don't. You don't see um, cellulite. I see it. I mean, listen, <laughs> it's clear now. But at the time, I go, he was just a little chubby. This is unnecessary. Oh, okay. He's a good. I was like arguing for our case. I was like, he's not even that fat either. <laughs> we both shouldn't he's be like, here. Shut up! Yeah. I am fat. And his, I want to get skinny. His towel is covering his. It's coming up his to his boobs. tits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave his boobs. I like seeing them. Yeah, they're nice. I like touching his boobs. Well, yeah, it's yeah. they're squishy and nice. But it was like, yeah, it, I spent a week there, and I remember just being so. And at the end of the week, they were like, everyone was like, they were like, oh, this guy's. They, you know, they they accepted me for who I was, mm. but there were a couple people that were irritated, like a couple kids, because it's just like, yo, man, I'm here trying to lose weight. Mm. And this guy's already shown up. He's you should not show up at fat camp as the after picture. No, I agree. Yeah. That's you know? not nice. It's upsetting. Yeah, that's upsetting. The children were very upset. <laughs> <laughs> you traumatized. There's like all the all these kids out there that are that are like, I was sent to fat camp and I wanted yeah. to lose weight, but then this skinny boy from New York showed and up. And that's when I got older and I saw that people went to camp as like kids, and I was just like, What kind of camp did you go to? Like, oh man, it was great. I was making out in the Woods. I go, what is what is this? You could have made out with a fat girl. The was, fuck? Get it was, over it. I believe it was all dudes. Uh, yeah. I just don't remember. Right, it was Muslim, of course. Yeah. It must have been all dudes. Yeah, I don't remember there being women there, or were they also just 
weird titted kids. Or maybe they all looked like men. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, but it's just like I remember weird titted kids. I remember being there, going, "There's like, <laughs> like everyone's childhood." It's like North Korea, everybody looks the same. <laughs> yeah, they all have the bowl haircuts. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I just remember looking around, going, "This is marching. not right." We marching. were in unison. I kid you not. We were behind. We were like in a, a dictator. A we were in dictator. a field running laps. <laughs> It was, and I remember hearing people like, oh, I got my first hand job at camp. I go, at Muslim fat camp? They're like, no. <laughs> and I go, and I try to tell people about this and no one believes me. It's like I made it up. Maybe you did. No. I hope you did. If you did, you're a genius. I am, but yeah. I'm not that smart. <laughs> I'm, I'm more ignorant. But it's like, I, I remember being there going like, this is not right. This so you did. You did know. Yeah, of course I knew. This is wrong. I you don't know. You, you can't know. send a skinny fat kid to a fat camp. <laughs> I know I didn't qualify for weight. But that is a very immigrant thing to do, isn't it? It's like because your parents tried yes. to, to like to to um fit into the American thing and send yes. you to camp. Yes. But they <laughs> <laughs> they kind of, you know, were like a little bit off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a couple of years later, they had sent me and my brother, I think one maybe in the, in the next year, actually, we went to another camp, a summer camp, but this was like a, a daytime thing. So you'd attend during the day and go home and go home. Or so what was it, in Long Island? Or no, something? this one was actually we didn't, it was like a block away. Oh, OK. Yeah. 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 But it was all it was a Christian. It was a Christian summer camp there. What, what are your uh, they, I don't so even weird. I don't even. But it was mostly Asian. And I remember just being there going like these are like, you know, the, uh, other than the Jesus stuff. Mm. I didn't mind it. <laughs> It was kind of nice. There was no we, no forced exercising, fun little games we would play. It just felt like a holding pen for like cr converting you to Christianity. <laughs> Maybe that's where like my kind of like thing about I always think about like Christianity a lot. And I think because I don't know, I wasn't. What does it mean you think about it a lot? You think about whether or not you should be one? No, 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 no. Oh. Good God, no. Okay. But I think about like I just think about the entire religion. I'm always like because it's fascinating. Like what yeah. were you raised under? Nothing. Oh, okay. Crazy people. Yeah, 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 yeah Germans, yeah. of course. No, yeah, and like my yeah. mom's not German, but no, the artists. Right. They, they weren't religious at all. Of course not, because yeah. they're sitting there thinking about their own like yeah. life is meaningless. My dad was <laughs> raised Christian, but then yeah. he, when he was like, he was raised in a small town in Bavaria, mm -hmm. and I don't know why I made like an asshole. <laughs> Clearly, it has something about it is triggering a feeling that you're going through yeah. that ties back to Bavaria. Or maybe I just need to have sex. Um, yeah, okay. Well, but, you know. So Bavaria, little town. Mm -hmm. And he was, and you know, in like the 60s mm -hmm. or 70s or whatever. Went, no, 60s. He was born in 52, so 60s. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, he he's a writer now, and he started writing when he was young. So he rewrote the lyrics to Silent Night to okay. say, like, hellish night, oh, like, Lordy. debaucherous night. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. went into the church on Christmas Eve yeah, when he yeah, was, yeah. like, 15, which Christmas Eve in Germany is, like, it's just like the world stops. It's the most right. important thing ever. Of course. He went into this church in the small town and passed out hand copied. Jesus. Um, copies of this like uh, hellish night right. uh, version of Silent Night. And then um, during the collection, which is the most important time for the church when of they're course collecting the money. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I um, love that, don't they? And then he was kicked out. They, they, he had to leave the mm -hmm. city basically the town and they there was like an article about him saying that he was possessed by the devil and stuff like that see what i mean so i yeah, yeah they didn't yeah they why would they uh, so clearly religion didn't have a no not but at it was, all i Zero. think it dogged him so much yes that he's like i'm not gonna right it ends here yeah no for yeah. sure and then on my mom's side they my grandma had to wear, wear the yellow star and my you know they were jewish so they went through all kinds of stuff but they were mm. like intellectuals right so Back then, religion and intellectual people didn't really mix. Yeah, they don't want you know? that. No, no, they didn't no. Want Once that. you start to get a certain level of intellect, you realize, oh, this is all just a matter of control. Right. And I think once you pass that even further, you go, man, I think it's sort of necessary. The control? Yeah. Really? I think that. Okay, I understand what you mean to have some order. Yeah. I think that's the thing about religion. I think that there is... I don't agree, man. I don't agree. I think people inherently have morals and inherently know what's right and wrong. I don't think... Like, I think most people... They don't want to take the responsibility, though. But religion doesn't make them take the responsibility. It at least 
confines them to a set level of rules that they, they have to like, abide to it. But they all still do fucked up shit. Yeah, I and understand. And then Catholics just go and confess. I would rather they feel some guilt because of some thing in the sky. I think they would feel guilt anyway. You think so? I yes, absolutely. I, I don't I don't I think that having this sort of structure kind of it gives them some order in, in which to operate in. And listen, I would love if people could do that freely. I think they can. Yeah, that might be a uh... I think it's more about that most people don't want to have to make decisions and don't want to have to think about that. I don't think that religion is beneficial. I a thousand percent agree with yeah, you. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it's for. And right. I think that's why people go there because it's hard to like have conflicting emotions. It's hard to, to do something fucked up and still say, okay, I can still be a good person, yeah. you know? Right. And that's hard to like live with. So right? then wouldn't you want to give them an out? But it's not an out. It makes the it, it it it's it's oppressive. It's oppression. Well, you know, I hope you enjoy your seat in hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get a seat. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually just became embraced my Jewish side when I realized that all the Jewish kids were staying home on Jewish holidays. And I was like, I'm Jewish. I'm not fucking coming in on Rosh Hashanah. Fuck oh, for that. like to school? Yeah. Uh. That's when I was like, oh, yeah, I'm Jewish. Look at, no, <laughs> Look at you! Look at you using this. Say, you know, say what? what? What do you think That's I'm good? So Jewish. No, of you. I wasn't going to say that at all. Actually, oh, really? I'm saying, look at you abusing the religion to your own benefit. <laughs> so you're part of the problem. No. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, everybody should do it that way. No, see, that's what I it, control the religion. It doesn't control that's me. That's what it is. I knew there was something that was up. Oh, disgusting. Disgu <laughs> see what I mean? That's what it is. <laughs> I think disgusting. you're a morally corrupt person, and that's why right. you're using. Judy Everybody's morally corrupt. You At least just, I say it out you, loud. You just said a minute ago, I think people could do well. No, to people have morals and yeah. people are also morally corrupt okay. at the same time. And I think that everybody's everything at the same time. I Didn't think you watch the bagel you, movie? I, no. <laughs> what? I everything, live in the bagel everywhere. movie. Exactly. <laughs> I, but it's like, I think that it's like people need, I think religion can serve as a guiding light to some people who could use that sort no. of compass. I think nobody you, that's you just a think piece the compass is Right. Go I on. think nobody that's a piece of shit stop being a piece of shit because of religion. Everybody, anybody that's a piece of shit is a piece of shit whether or not they're religious. And I don't anybody know if that's, that's not is also not. I don't know if that's more pessimism or more optimism. I'm not sure. I don't know. I think it's. I I love people, but I don't love the oppression. The the like the. Uh, oppression of people through an institution institutionalized yeah, it's, oppression it's not supposed to be but you can't separate that you can you though can't. there are people that are religious that aren't oppressive o they exist oppressive no o that's or oppressing true. or but being there oppressed aren't religious institutions that aren't oppressive every religious institution can be oppressive is oppressive can be it's an interpretation I mean, everything's an interpretation. Yeah, okay, all right. See, this is <laughs> this is so German of no, you to it's come. No, not. <laughs> what is life? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If that's German. Well, that's how not do French. What Hindus think about this? Uh, well, listen, Hinduism is riddled with problems. Uh, the well, how do you mean? The religion of peace, I mean, sure, until you ask Muslims what they think about it. And then they're like, yeah, it's kind of shitty. Then they're like, you're fat and you need to come to our camp. <laughs> yeah. Only three ninety nine for yeah. one week. <laughs> Outside of calling us fat. But it's like Muslims in India are suffering horrendously. Unjustly yes. so. You know, like they feel that the Hindus in India feel like they're being oppressed. Right. That that. Muslim uh, that the na that the religion of Islam is a virus living in India. That's right. how they Some feel. Some people feel that way. S right. Yeah. And it's not good. No. That's right. Not and good it's at a all. poor interpretation of a lot of things. But I think that religion, when used properly, but and it's it, not used properly. I, that's the difference. That's like We're going to capitalism when implemented, but it's not implemented in the right way. So you can't you can't separate that. That's like I, this like form of idealism. Yeah, that but that's is not but that's real. the balance of everything, right? It's like when any like it's kind of like anything could be said can be used poorly that way. But it is used poorly, and it's used properly too. Where the problem is, you never get to see it. That's the problem. That doesn't make the big news. On the institution? Okay. okay. Like my mom goes to, my mom is a devout Hindu. Mm. Okay. She's devoutly Hindu. 
does she've got does she have mangled thoughts about other cultures and religions yeah yeah absolutely R wild shit comes out of her mouth mm. but is she does hinduism provide a guiding light in which she lives her life yes but, would but you're she never going to hear about it no and i agree with you i'm not yeah. and i'm not saying like that that religion is bad for the everyday person. I'm saying the institutions are yes. oppressive because they have to be because otherwise they can't keep the thing going that they need without to oppression going. you think that that's the major ingredient Absolutely. like that's the eggs that's to their the major omelet? ingredient in capitalism too it doesn't work without oppression it doesn't work without exploitation of the people like you you uh, uh, any cult yeah if you even go to the next level like it doesn't work any other way it just doesn't work I really, I don't know if that, if that might just be more optimism or more pessimism. I really think that underneath, it can. It can, and maybe that's my hopefulness in thinking that a cult could work hmm. if the person in charge, namely me, would not have <laughs> sex with everybody. And I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, but it comes down to sex anyway. Yeah, everything but you, got, comes you just got to gotta stop fucking everybody. But everything comes down to sex. Every religion yeah. is also obsessed with sex. It's yeah. all a, a, a sex obsession. Listen, if you people join what I'm up to, there's going to be a lot of masturbation. <laughs> What? And not, not. What do you mean? Uh, you what know does what I mean? that mean? Yeah, there's like your own masturbation pod in my cult. What? There's no, there's no sex bothering anybody. I'm not gonna be out here. Masturbation is sex. Yeah, yeah, but not like with it. It's not gonna be like an oppressive thing. You know what I mean? It's gonna be like nice. Like I'm gonna be a great cult leader. I, I'll tell you that much. You have this cult character. Yeah, I, I think that cult it would, leader character. Yeah, I would be great at it. I'm not mm. gonna be sitting here using manipulating people. I'm gonna be out here getting the best out of you every time. In so, a masturbation pod yeah but you get your own <laughs> privacy to have oh so yeah. there's no cameras in no the pod. that's gross i don't know what no your cult no no, is. no my cult is gonna be why solid. do you need a pod why can't you masturbate out in the open in your cult what do you mean out in the open why do you need to be in a pod this, is this shameful? No, Are you shaming people, people no, for masturbating? People, listen, if you want the pod, like if you want a window to pod for you to look out, <laughs> that's great. But I think that you should but do. But people can look in. No, 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 no. It's a one-way okay. window. It's like, <laughs> it's, like a, it's like an interview mirror. <laughs> it's an interrogation window. So you get to do that. I think my your masturbation pods that way should exist. Okay. You know, I'm not shaming masturbation. I'm just saying that when you have a cult, there's going to be children about, right? They can't be out there playing. So gotta, people are fucking then. Yeah, of course. And not just masturbating. Consensually. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be the best cult ever. So it is a sex cult. No, it's not going to be a, a sex cult. It's not going to be about there's sex. There's masturbation pods. The only thing that you've said about this pod is that there's masturbation I'm pods. I'm also going to get the best of you as a person on a day-to-day -day <laughs> basis because the collection plate needs the most money. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oppression. It's not oppression. It is. It's 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 a membership fee. <laughs> That's all it is. All right. I love it. Um, I could yell uh, at you for hours. Yeah. Um, uh, I always ask my guests if they grew up with any cool sayings or proverbs or anything. Did you grow up with any? I looked some up, um, some Hindu ones. You think I'm out here getting Hindu proverbs? I don't know. Maybe my, you grew up with my one. My parents, no. I mean, there's. Um, this, is, well, this one is nice. Yeah. This is a Hindu proverb. Proverb, apparently. When an elephant is in trouble, Lordy. even a frog will kick him. <laughs> <laughs> I should have left. <laughs> I should have left him. That's me. great. I think the only proverb I, like I, I remember hearing, it's, listen, wisdom wasn't being touted. You know, I know your dad is like an artist. So My he, dad was an alcoholic too, so okay, relax. That's okay? fine. But there's this at least, when I think you're an artist there, you, you do the work of... Yes. Your textbook yes. is your soul. Yes, 100%. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yes. If you're like a doctor, your textbook is a textbook that exists. Yes, 100%. So that's Beautifully the difference. Said. Thank, High five. Thank you. That's a proverb right there. Thank you. You but made up a proverb. I appreciate it. But the, I mean, I'm a guru, baby. I, I got to be out here creating <laughs> proverbs, right? You know, I've got many names. True. And I see guru. What's the what, Your name is Kunal C. Aurora. Yes. What does it stand for? Clitoris? God, <laughs> you stink. <laughs> uh, Chand, which means moon, at, ah, which I will guide beautiful. those. <laughs> Much like the moon. Yeah, it's like, you know, I, I have many names. Hood Fuchsius. I've got many names. I'm out here in this world. Okay, um, go ahead. Sorry, you were going to say a proverb. A proverb. The... 
So I think that that's a different thing. I didn't grow up with Proverbs in my house. This is not how we grew up. It was very immigrant mentality. A buddy of mine said this best. He goes like there were like some immigrants are they're like villagers. Mm -hmm. So they are. Mm -hmm. And it's True. villager mentality. True. You know, and that's what a lot of it is. And I, I grew up in that kind of situation. So it's not no one is out here. Uh, assessing the depths of their soul, mm -hmm. which is different than I think than how in your situation. Totally. Yeah. But ours is more like work. Mm -hmm. And if that isn't working, work harder. Well, actually, my my parent, my dad especially also had that mentality because he grew up so poor mm -hmm. and he came from like nothing. Mm -hmm. So I think that that adds to that mentality, yeah. too. But yes, I remember once we were sitting at dinner, I was like, 12 or 13 mm -hmm. and I took my glass of water and poured it over my head yeah and I just wanted a reaction I don't know what I was doing exactly right, right. I, maybe I was just doing a bit god that's and, that's so I can analyze that for an hour and my mom goes <gasps> yeah Lucy and my dad yeah started crying and went look at her she's a flower that needs water and i was like uh oh, i was just being an idiot you know god see what i mean um, in an so artist yes. house yeah, yeah that's wild yeah yeah i don't um i think the only proverb if we're gonna get back to it mm -hmm. in my house was uh if we left the lights on in a room we weren't in my dad would be yelling you think i run a factory <laughs> And that's it. That's it. You think <laughs> so? I love that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, now we've come to the very witching time of night mm. where we must play the poll question. Oh, God. You are such a weirdo. <laughs> you are such a. This is, this is what New York City. This is what people don't understand about New Yorkers. They think it's just these two things. Yeah. You know? And then there are people like me mm. and oddly as well. People like you. What do you mean? You don't think you're a weirdo? I, I don't think as, I'm, I'm as weird as you are. What? What? Yeah, no. You why? Are, why? What you're makes me much weird? weirder than How me. How am I weird? Because you, I say things yes, in an animated way? Yes, you are. You're a weirdo. And I'm I like it. I like it a lot. I, I like super yeah. normal things. I know you do. Of course you like super normal things, <laughs> but you're an oddball too. Mm, okay, fine. I used and to be I'm, very upset when people said that, but now I You I, should I embrace it. it. All I those embrace things. It now. Yeah. I can't Who you are is enough. Okay. Are you sure? And if you just put a little money in this car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready for the poll question? I'm ready Stop for the trying to fucking distract here. Right. Are you ready or not? Sure. Okay. Kunal, mm. C, mm. Chan. Yeah. Aurora. Sure. Of Flushing Queens. Sure. By way of India. Okay. By way of Muslim fat camp. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> if you were president of the United States of America, what American food would you ban? Oh, wow. Is this the weekly question? No, this is the this yeah, is this, this is, question. This is, a, this is a weekly poll questionnaire. Yeah. Oh my god. This is a tough, tough question. Yeah. And, I, and my answer is going to be immensely hated. I love that. That's great. But when you have this sense of power. <laughs> It sometimes require, requires you to make hard choices. Yeah, that's true. That affects everybody. You're very presidential right now. Including myself. Wow. Yeah. Whoa, okay. And I'm going to say something that's really going to upset the people that are listening to this. And I'm okay with that. Okay. Because I too will subscribe to this belief. All right. If I'm president of this country. Yeah. And until I actually des decide to start running a cult, <laughs> um, I will say that I would ban chicken wings. <gasps> chicken wings, you motherfuckers. Yeah. That's what happens when you elect a first generation immigrant to office. Why? I think that it is... I mean, one, not healthy for you. Where are they getting all these wings? That's the other thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are they just, is there 
Are they just breeding like wing? Multiple winged chickens? Multiple winged chickens. I don't know. Probably. And I don't want to know. Ugh. And to be honest, the amount of chicken wings that gets consumed. Yes. First, I mean, for let's just say on throughout the year, then just on Super Bowl Sunday, Ugh. and then maybe July 4th, major like situations like that, sporting events. Mm. I just think that ultimately we would probably benefit and just to think about what chickens yeah like how wrong all of that is yeah that's wrong that's and we would up. don't get me wrong i love a chicken wing i think it's phenomenal i mean this is a food that you sauce in a thousand different ways well a thousand is exaggerated but there's you know like what five I, sauces and i mean you go to buffalo wild wings it's a different story right okay. they I would argue never been, i don't eat chicken yeah wings. they would argue otherwise mm. right but to see to take that out of american culture mm. it would be a hard hard dig but yeah, i think ultimately true. we it's would be, be done we would be better together yeah. as a society <laughs> Okay, speed round, all right? Sure. If you could deport one American person, who would you deport? First thing that comes to mind. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Uh, an American person? Yeah. <sighs> mm. <laughs> that this is the speed round. I know. Am I supposed to go fast? Yes. Oh, um, I think I would deport probably Donald Trump only because I think that it'd be he'd probably it'd be good for him yeah and i don't i don't have like a disdain for this man interesting yeah I, that's I'm, a whole other podcast that's episode. a whole other podcast mm. but i just think that it benefits everybody and i think okay. that that would have been helpful for him too trump is gone uh what's the most indian thing you've ever done attended an indian wedding in earnest mm. yeah. <laughs> in earnest yeah. what's the most american thing you've ever done eaten a steak a steak yeah okay because to grow up under oh a steak of yeah. course yeah yeah you weren't eating beef no i i had my first steak in college wow and i still think about that steak wow and how it was just Do the you most feel guilty oh there was immense guilt mm. but it was also college so there was like a sense of rebellion wow, wow so i was wow. like i'm gonna eat this steak oh my god wow i'm eating steak okay what's the most new york thing you've ever done the most new york thing man I mean, there's so many things that come to mind. Oh, man, I'm trying to think what situations of New York stuff that I've done. I hate that this is a speed round. I truly can't stand. <laughs> I can't stand that this is a speed round. Good. I think that's my Jiggy answer. Has to I'm going to sit here that I got to tell you and I, you're going to tell me <laughs> no, I got to go yes. fast. Fuck that noise. Okay, I'll go slow as I want. Yeah, I'll I go slow that. as I want. I don't care if Jiggy got somewhere to be. <laughs> Who the hell is this? I just met this dude. You think I'm supposed to be here and just I'm, I'm supposed to move when Jiggy says to move? Well, guess what? We We'll get jiggy with it when I want to get jiggy oh, with it. Oh, snap, motherfuckers. He you seems see. like a nice guy, though. Um, okay, last question. Okay. Sure. Kunal, mm. do you know, and I, I want an honest and serious answer because this is serious. Do you know how I can meet David Hasselhoff? I don't know. Sometimes it's best to keep gods at a distance. Yes. Yeah. This is true. You know? This is true. Let them be someone you praise from best a distance. Answer. Best answer. Yeah. Don't meet him. Yeah. I, I think that it. might be your bet, your best bet. I agree. Yeah. I agree. You'll I only agree. be disappointed. And this is true. I think so. You know? Yeah. And that's no, I'm not speaking to his faults. No, no. Just I'm just speaking the, the, the crossroads yeah. of the reality of him yeah. and your expectations. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then now I have to stop doing this podcast um, <laughs> forever. <laughs> Kunal, where can people find you online? Everything I do is all under the same social media moniker all day kca that's also the website uh all day kca.com or canal .com. it's all there if you would even type in canal it's all there as well listen to canal's podcast follow him everywhere go see his shows he tours he does shows in new york he's everywhere he's one of the funniest people you'll ever it's see really in your you. life you're gonna love him so much follow him slide into his dms and just curse him out invite him to <laughs> <laughs> invite him to your fat camp graduation and um, <laughs> i want to be there 
<laughs> Send to, him a steak. To help you put the Twizzlers from one <laughs> end to the other to the other. Help you burn the Twizzlers. Send him a steak. Um, Kunal, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for Woo-hoo, having me. Jiggy, thank you so much. Thank you to Douchebag Steve, to Martin, to Craig, to JT, to Gio, to Wesley, to everybody on the Patreon. Uh, check out the Patreon. Give us a rating and a review on iTunes. Subscribe. Do all that stuff. Thank you for listening. We love you. Goodbye.